Evening, friends and neighbors. It is finally here. The last big release from Rogue Analytics. And the guys here on the channel, we're going to go over our big boards and answer your questions tonight. Welcome to RGR Football. Evening, everybody. I do believe Dan is going to join me later, so I got the headphones on. We're going to go through a number of things. I see a ton of people in here already. That's great to see. Um, and some super chatters already. Good Lord, you guys are off and flying. Uh, I do appreciate that. I want to get into a couple of things before we start looking at the boards and answering all the questions. So that said, uh, for all of you that have been around here all off season, I appreciate it. We've had a great run. And it won't end with this draft. It will be a, a long haul for the draft. We're still going to be live all through the first round. We're going to give you um, our analysis of those selections back and forth and specifically what it means to the Chiefs as well as we go through because we'll have to focus a little bit more on what's going on with you know uh, the Ravens and the Bills and what they're doing. That's going to be important. But it also everything trickles down and affects the Chiefs. And then there's always the option that the Chiefs could trade back in. With those two twos, they could maybe try to get a push to trade back into the first if they feel that they need to. So we're going to be on high alert. We're going to be here the whole time. We're also going to be here for day two. We're going to be there from start to finish. We're going to kick both these live streams off as the draft start. So you can put your laptop or whatever next to the television and watch them both or listen to us and watch them. Who knows? Whatever. I'll be working off of the television feed. So we should be, for the most intents and purposes, uh, I'm on a satellite, so we should be pretty much synced, knock on wood. It's going to be a good time. Um, that said, everything that we've been doing, all the film work that Dan and I have done, all the stats that Jeff has done, all the athleticism that we put into the guide and the matrix, it all comes down to boiling it down to a draft board. And that's what I use to create my board every year. And you guys, if you ever want the archive, you can go back to 2010 when I first started doing this. Um, first year for Dan and first year for Aaron, they both completed theirs as well. And in the description, in the chat, there's spots where you can go download all of our boards in a PDF that you can either, you know, mark up and say, hey, this was dumb <laughs> or know what's coming next in terms of how we see the fits, not just around the league, but for the Chiefs in particular. So we're going to get into all of that. Um, we're going to get to your Q&A as we go through, and we'll just kind of bop around. I'm going to put it on the screen, and we'll answer questions as we go from that. And I'll just make a couple of highlights for you. Um, but if you want to support the channel, you can hit the RGR store. We've got the Trooper shirts and the whole nine yards. You can hit the Super Chats and the Super Stickers in here tonight. But if you do, no matter what dollar amount you give us, I appreciate it, and I want you to get something for it tonight. So ask a question. Let me hear something that I can at least tell you, even if it's just telling me, hey, I don't agree with that safety ranking or something like that once you guys see this. Now, I'm going to do my best to make it as visible as I can on the screen, but again, you can go download it, and you might want to jump over in a new tab and do that right now. It might make it a little bit easier to see because I packed a lot of information into this board. There's always a lot going on there. And... I am going to start tonight by saying there is no wrong board. Whatever you see as your interpretation, that's how it rolls. That's perfectly legit. So don't get too hung up on where somebody is or that kind of thing. <coughs> Just let it roll. I um, want to give a shout out to everybody down there at Boulevard doing their thing, making this beer one of my favorites. And this time of year, I always get into that. So cheers to everybody out there. And we are going to get rolling. Um, let me share this screen and I will get over. In fact, I am just going to share the screen, not just the window. So bam, that should be coming up. Maybe I should change that actually and share the window because that might actually make it zoom in a little bit more. We're going to try that now. Um, I have to go to a different app when I go to Dan and um Aaron's boards so we're going to get to that too. Aaron's in the mod so you can ask him your own questions as well. Um the mod father is in the house 
And I think I'll probably just go to this so everybody can see it as maximized as possible. Um, I'm going to start with the super chatters because uh, there's a couple in here already. And I do want to say thank you for that. Doug, thank you very much. Wide receiver edge, LB corner, which one in round two? The, the hard part for me is it could be an edge. It could be a wide receiver. It could be a linebacker. The only one that I don't think is going to have a ton of value for you there at 58 and 63 is the corner group. I think there's there's a chunk above, and I think there's a chunk below. And I don't know that there's going to be a good like target area right around there. Um, and one draft scenario that we went through on, on Locked on Chiefs, that podcast should hit this afternoon, this evening, I guess, um, it is well, – I already changed my uh, screen – is doing this. The Chiefs are at 63 and 58, right? And I want them to do this. I want them to go up in the second and trade back in the third to get a little bit of spread so that they're not stuck in the same little group. Because if it if the board falls in a way that they don't like, then they're kind of out of luck. And that's going to be a problem, I think. So it's a little bit difficult. But that's what I think. Any of those are on the table. Um, I put some of those position groups on the thumbnail on purpose, Doug. So hopefully that helps. Now, you did a couple, and thank you very much. I appreciate it. Happy belated birthday to Dan. He will be on later. We'll make sure that we let him know. And yeah, I mean, that you guys heard, I hope that you heard the video. Um, and oh, and I hope you guys saw yesterday's video where Dan and I sat down with Craig Stout and Ken Swanson from Arrowhead Pride. And then today they announced they're no longer going to be with Arrowhead Pride. So uh, hopefully you got uh, a good look at that. If you didn't, go back and watch that from last night. It was a lot of fun. Uh, some things we differ on and a lot of things that we see similarly. So um, I know a lot of you listen to them on their podcast as well. Now it's kind of a, a meeting of the minds. It was a good time. And I hope that you guys enjoyed the video aspect of it as well. Um, but uh, we did this mock for Locked On spreading them out. And I think that's going to be important. Um, I have a couple more videos coming for you. I have Dane Brugler that's coming up this week from The Athletic. Um, I have Seth. <laughs> we we had to re-record what we did last week because of Orlando Brown, but I have him coming on the channel this week. Um, and then after the draft, I have a couple of things, including Lucas Niang's trainer, Brett Yaris, is going to come on. Um, we're going to have an in-depth conversation about whether he can be the bookend and how he's been training, all kinds of stuff. I think you guys are really going to dig that. There'll be a piece of it on Locked on Chiefs as well. So um, I just want to say th there's a ton coming, and I appreciate you guys sticking with us. Don't fall off because the draft finishes, because as soon as the draft is done, we start looking about how they fit, what they have to do, and how they're going to manage all kinds of position groups. Doug, just because. <laughs> Thanks, Doug. Appreciate that. Um, Aaron, you did, and I know that it, it is it is a difficult process, but I appreciate you going through that. And you guys, we can jump in, and we'll go back and forth between everybody's board tonight. So um, it is an exercise that you kind of have to love or it just hurts. <laughs> but good job. Um, let's see. I want to hit all the super chatters <clears throat> and make sure that I'm not missing anybody. Um, and I've probably talked all too much already. Uh, shout out to two uh, from yesterday, Ian and Doug again. That was uh, on the 25th from yesterday's uh, show with those guys. So I, I appreciate that. Um, let's see. Who do we have? We have Gooch. Gooch is in the house. Okay. It's time to get on. Yep. I'm with you there, dude. We are going to get rolling and get into uh, the timing, uh, uh, where things need to go. And yes, sir, thank you very much for the support, as always, Mr. Gooch. Um, I think we're going to do – I have an idea to do something special post-draft um, with you in particular. And then um, I, I'm going to invite some of some of the, the main contributors here that maybe don't get to get into the Zooms and get in with us, Julian Avery, um, Metal, like a, a number of people. So I think we're going to have a good time with it as we start to see the Chiefs' new roster – take form and we're going to get a lot of different opinions so um let's see here make sure i'm not falling behind on the supers sam asked do you think the chiefs will be able to keep hill and brown next offseason yep it, I, it will not be a problem every time i think something's gonna be a problem brett veach figures it out so um and that's what the the video but yesterday or the day before or when the orlando news um came down it's like uh, brett veach just it, it's not his goal but i think it, he just enjoys the fact he can make me look dumb because when I'm like, hey, you can't get this team to trade with you and give up, you know, a Pro Bowl level tackle to make you better. And he's like, yeah, really, Trace, huh? Um, let me see if I boom. And he gets that done. Like it's 
it's impressive and it's infuriating at the same time. <laughs> Ruthless, I like Amon Ross St. Brown and Diami Brown. Do you think that Kyle Long can play right tackle? I think Kyle Long can play right tackle. Um, I've seen some people theorizing he could go over to left guard. I really don't see that aspect of it. Um, I think it's more likely that he slides out to tackle. Stevie's in the house. Um, Julie and linebacker and wide receiver. Yep, that's what I'm thinking. It, it depends on the edges that fall. Um, I think there's a possibility that Greg Rousseau falls. In fact, I will show you guys. Maybe I can blow this up and make it visible. So this is my edge group. <clears throat> and so the way that I break this out, and for all of you that go download that, hopefully this will make more sense as well. Like these two rows are going to be my top tens. Guys that I think have the grade to play in the top 10. There isn't an edge in that group. Then comes the middle ground and then comes, it's basically said in, in thirds for the first and second rounds. So it's not, I'm not giving like a top 300 rank to them, a specific number, but I'm giving a range, a top, a 10, 11 pick range. I don't even have anybody in the edge group in the second. I have Ojolari and Quidipe right there at the bottom third of the first round. Does that move? Does that change? Who knows? I think a lot of teams are going to be scared off by Jalen Phillips. I think the concussion protocol in particular is something that's going to make him fall under the second. That's my thought. Is that true? I don't know. Then it comes to Tryon. I think Tryon could be up here, but I know that he has doesn't have the production that some teams like, so I think that that could be an issue for him. And so I see these three as being possibilities at 58. Greg Russo is one of them. Now, Russo is not the kind of athlete that I usually look for, but he was uber productive in an ACC school, and it was just one year. He's got a lot of room to improve still. He can play the edge, and he can reduce down into the tackle and do exactly what Steve Spagnuolo and Brandon Daly want him to do. So I think that fit is really good, and I think he could be there. You're going to see a lot of people say, always oh, a first-rounder. I am not one of them. So Owe I have down at the bottom of the second round because he's a great athlete, but I don't know if he can get to the quarterback yet. Um, Patrick, <clears throat> good evening. I think it's crazy to think that we may be in play for Julio. I mean, uh, again, nothing will surprise me with Brett Feach. Absolutely nothing. Um, Gooch, thanks for the super chat. I watched your uh, collab, how you talk about a young center in Blythe getting, uh, being a rental and not discuss, you know, who as a, <laughs> as a get healthy and takeover center. Well, I understand, and we didn't quite get to that. And quite frankly, you guys, there was like 10 minutes of tackle talk that immediately became null and void. And I know some of you want to hear that, so I'll probably put that back up um, in another video so you can hear that part just because I do think the Chiefs need a backup tackle so we can get to that. But um, to show you what I do think is the reality, Gooch, um, I'm going to put you in here because, uh, by the way, so here's the key. And there's a key on the board itself to explain all this. But these batteries, these are either captains or like severe energy givers, guys that drive a team. And so you can see all the icons. Um, the blue the blue chip icon here is for one of the top five in the athletic matrix at the position. So you can see that. When it comes down into the lineman, you can see the Z. That's a zone blocking scheme guy. Um, and so you can see the matchup for the Chiefs. Now, Landon Dickerson, I dropped to the third because of the injury. I am all for them trying, again, to move up from 58 into the second and move back in the third, right? And I would think that would be a great spot to take him because then the value uh, at the third round, I think, is great. And you can afford to let him develop and get healthy. You're absolutely right. Um, will they do that? I don't know. Um there are teams that I know – I've heard from two people that have spoken to teams that have taken Landon Dickerson completely off their boards. I have others that have him in the fifth round. So, like, I feel like I'm being pretty realistic but not being, you know, overly harsh against the injury pattern. So, hopefully that works. Um, Christo Swag, is Breland a post-draft signing? Probably. Um, I really don't know – if, if it depends on the draft or if they're just waiting, that's going to be the big question. Um, Kansas City Chiefs, Kenny Stills on a one-year. I can get down with that. I like Kenny's game. Um, Pono, how are you, dude? Aloha. Um, everyone doubted my Orlando Brown guest. You were right. Get ready. Another Brown is coming. Give you a hint. He's a receiver who played for the Bucks last year. I hope you're wrong. I'm not going to say you will be wrong because you have proven yourself to be right. 
I hope not. I don't like the player. I don't like his attitude. I don't like him in the locker room, but that's me. Maybe Andy's comfortable with it, and maybe Mahomes is, and if they are, then more power to him. Thanks. Appreciate it, Pono. Um, Andy loves versus Tilly. You know, line, any chance that we could see LDT start at center and long at right guard? That is a possibility, Voodoo. I don't know that I've ever heard of Laurent actually snapping. So it might be a long shot. What you could see is LDT at right guard and long out at right tackle. I think that is a viable option. Um, I think there are worse things that they could do with their guys if they choose to do that. I'm going to zoom this out a little bit more so we can get a, a little bit more look at, at the overall landscape. And I'll tell you the other thing about these boards, you guys. Um, the red cards here, these are uh, medical concerns. Um, what else is in the key here? Um these, these uh, emojis with the sirens, those are position change guys. And on the far side, when you scroll over, you'll see this in the PDFs as well. This is how many grades I have on each round. So th I have 20 first round grades in this year's class is what this means. I have 36 in the second, 39, 38, 31. You see how it goes. And then down at the, the bottom, there's the total. I have 88 on offense, 104 on defense that I find a draftable grade that, that fits this scheme in this team. Now, I do make some exceptions because there are players that aren't necessarily zone scheme guys on the offense. So they're not necessarily 4 3. You know, like I do make some exceptions because I do want to have the best athletes on the board, the best players on the board, even if they don't fit the, the chief scheme. But you can see how some of that works. Now, I know I'm falling way behind in the comments. I apologize. Aaron, um, stack up whatever I need to know, and I'll get there. I'm going to hit the super chatters here. I thought Al Gray did pretty well last year, and all these free agents, does he mean he competes for the center job or just a backup? I think right now he is competing for the center job would be my guess because I don't think Blythe is by any way hand him the job kind of dude. Um, that said, if Al Gray is your backup, I think that's all good. I think that's a really nice backup. Him and Remmers as backups, I think – Sets them up to go through attrition like they did last year. Jake, thank you for your super chat. Appreciate it. Um, would a live stream wouldn't a live stream without some RGR love? Hypothetically, is this offensive line at least top ten? Of course it is. Um, I mean, we're getting there. There's still a large question mark at right though. Right tackle is still a question mark. I think it's going to be Niang. It could be Long. Um, I don't know. I know Long looks spry. I know he looks like he's healed up, but until he's on the field, I don't know if he's back to what he was. So I, we're just going to have to wait and see. But yeah, they certainly have the the roster now to compete and be one of those top ten teams. Um, thanks, Jake Ryan. Uh, what position should the Chiefs go after with their two second rounders? I think what value is going to be there is going to be wide receiver. Uh, you can see here on the board, as we come down into the second, I think there's going to be some jumping up, like Bateman and Moore could certainly go in the first round. I, I think that's a little rich for them, given some of their games are incomplete, in my opinion. Terrace Marshall has some injury stuff now that came out of the, the Indy Combine. Kadarius Tony, I, I think I might even be on high on this compared to Dan. We'll talk to him in a bit. Um, I think Diami Brown is, is going to be a serious target. I think Amon Ross St. Brown could be a target as well. Um, I think that's pretty dense little section that you could go after. Um, I don't think they need D-line, but you can see there's a good group of them here too. I think the corners could be interesting. Um, I think you could get some of those guys. Um, I like Elijah Molden. Uh, could he be there? Maybe. I think it's tighter. I don't have Jamin Davis as a first-round pick. He doesn't play the run as good as Zavin does. Like He's not as all-around. He and Jabril are more coverage guys than they are all-around players. That's why they're in the second round. I think one of them could be chief, and I would hope so. Um, you could always go edge again if you didn't do it with the first pick as well. Even if you like Joe Sai and they go a little bit deeper for that, I'm okay with that. So that's what I'm thinking. Um, let's see. Who else is in here? I want to hit the Super Chats and not overlook them, but I, I don't want to skip everybody else over as well. Oh, good Lord, but there's a ton of you guys stacked up. Okay. Um, let's get to ripping Jay. Um, I got the draft guide, super pleased with it and see how much work you do. Thanks. Thanks, Jay. I, I'm really glad to hear that. I, I hope that it's, um, 
easily digestible is my is my goal. I always try to break things down into you know the graphs and the pictures to make things easier. I hope. Um, I have a couple of tweaks I'm going to do next year. I know it's not the standard like here's my rankings like everybody else does on the web. I'm trying to be more um, of a true evaluator than a media evaluator. You know what I mean? So um, that's why I rank on specific things. Um, let's see. Avery, the gap between the second and our next pick, do you see us reaching the prospect at 63? Might have held out for 94. Yeah, and again, that's why I would try to work a trade back. Um, find a team that is a middle pick team. Um, I got some some stuff going with the Niners in the mocks and the Redskins in the mocks. So they're middle. So if you give up both those picks, you you end up trading up in the second and you trade back in the third, and then you get some spread. And then I think you're, you're not stuck in a reach situation. That's exactly what I was going for. Um, you know, the business. <laughs> Thanks, man. I, and you are a busy dude, and I appreciate you being here, man. Nick, um, you're in St. Joseph. Rock on. Yeah, I w if they have camp open to the public, I will be there. I don't know if I'm going to get a press credential. Um, the Chiefs have said that eventually they will get me one, but right now with COVID and everything, I don't know if they're going to take any chances like that. So it is what it is. Um, Stevie, I'd like to know what Kent, Craig, and Matt are moving on to. I, I would too. They didn't share that with us the other day, um, but whatever it is, they'll knock it out of the park. Those guys are good at what they do. Um, and the, the nice thing is I think it'll probably open up a little bit more for us to do some collaborations again. Uh, which I'm looking forward to. I'm a little selfish that way. Uh, Marshall Smith, thank you, sir. I appreciate the super chat. Good to see you. Do you feel that trading out of our second round picks, um, one of our second round picks, and a third for a late first to move up and grab a wide receiver is too regressive, too aggressive? Um, I think it might be because I'm not sure it would get it done, to tell you the truth. I think if they want to get back in the first round, they're probably going to have to give up both of their twos. And for me, like I wouldn't want to do that. Cheers, Boulevard. Um, Chad, thank you for the super chat. Appreciate it very much. Does Prince Tega make the 53-man roster in your opinion? I don't think so. I think if they felt that he could do that, then they wouldn't have gone so hog wild on guys that could play guard or could play tackle. Um, and I don't think they would have brought back Remmers if they felt he and Niang were going to be too deep on the right tackle spot. That's my thought. Um we knew when he came out he was going to need development, so it's not a problem. I don't see that as an issue. And Dan made it. How are you, Dan? Good. How's everyone doing tonight? We are hanging in. A lot of great questions. We're kind of sneaking around the board and just kind of using the questions to guide us. Um, why, don't, why don't you tell folks how this process was for you? Building Man, this was a completely different – I've never done this kind of process before. So trying to, to really gauge – where you think a player is going to go, like like a, per a round basis first, in where you think they're going to go in the second, where they're going to go, if you like this guy better than the other one, you kind of have to really do some things that you like more so. So it really comes down to your own opinion on players, not necessarily how you have them scouted, but say you value something a little bit more, you put them ahead of somebody who doesn't have that necessarily. So it was definitely um, intimidating to take on, but I'm glad that I did it. It was fun. It is. It's it is an exercise and then some. And I know Aaron feels the same way too. <laughs> I'm sorry, Aaron. I should have warned you more. Um <clears throat> Michael, good question. Is is legit Julio a legit rumor? I mean, it's a legit rumor that they're willing to trade him. Yeah. I don't know that the Chiefs are gonna do it. I mean, the injury history alone might scare the Chiefs off. I don't know. But then again, it's all about value, right? I mean, when he's on the field. <laughs> He's better than Sammy. The problem is he's on the field about as much as Sammy. Yep, that's a big problem. Just just give me a wide receiver in the draft and just don't deal with it and get the contract for your contract. You don't have to pay him what you know fifteen million dollars that Julio Jones is getting. It doesn't make much sense to me. But again, I also had zero thinking they were going to trade for for Orlando Brown Jr. So what do I know? <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, we covered this, <clears throat> but we'll do it again from your perspective, Dan. What are two positions that you think might be likely with the twos? So I, I have like a, an area of three that I personally thought it's going to be for me. It's going to be either two out of wide receiver, linebacker, or corner. And I, I think that corner is, is a much higher on their board than a lot of fans thinks, mostly because 
they have a lot of question mark at corner. You have injury guy, you have injury guys, you have you know Bo Pete, who is a seventh round draft pick, who could never actually pan out, and Ward, who in my opinion should be a backup. So I think they want to upgrade that position secondary, um, in terms of the second corner on the field. If you can get Fenton to be in the slot, which I think they see him to be more of as of at this point, that would be that would benefit them because you, then you can play Snead on the outside. You can have someone else on the outside as well that fits what you want in the athlete and the speed. So uh, that, that's just what I think. I'm with you. Okay, let's let's compare real quick. So this is this is my board. Um, I have Newsom at the bottom of the first. I have Farley falling out of the first because of the injury, and then these four are a little a little grouping, little. Yeah. Well, hot zone like uh, like <laughs> Veach calls them. So on your board, let me pull that up. Let's see. Um, I'll have to zoom in this too. Yeah, I didn't get to all the medical stuff. I was just kind of putting it together and going as I thought of things at the top of my head. And then I pushed you. <laughs> so it's interesting. You have Farley falling farther than me. I like that. You have Stokes. Uh, you're a little higher on uh, Melifonwu. Um, and we're really pretty close on the other yeah. three. Um, so I think there's a good chunk there. Let's see what Aaron did. Aaron, I'm going to put you on the spot, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, I overdid oh, it. Oh, you're all way zoomed in. A apologies, apologies. <laughs> so he's got a second group that includes Kelvin Joseph. I think I think that would be a stretch for me. You really like Benjamin St. Juice. Um, I like him as well. I, I don't think he's there. but So you can see like there's different ranges of players that could be there for that position group. I think this could be a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, I certainly won't argue because I see the group they have is pretty much the same way you do. Yeah. Um, Aaron, your wife's freaking out about the Matthew getting signed. Do you foresee problems with doing that? No, I think it will provide them relief. I think clearly, and I heard this from somebody um, that you guys will see post draft. Uh, Tyron Matthew was the first guy to reach out to Lucas Yang when he was drafted. So like he is a leader, not just on the defense. Yeah. They want him on this roster for a good long time. I don't think it's going to be an issue. Uh, Marshall, thank you for the super chat. Who's the best whiteout that could fall to the late second? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at my board. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's do that. I'm flipping. I'm flipping. <clears throat> so ideally, I think we're we're talking probably about a Nico Collins in that area, if I remember correctly. That's yep. about what I have. Rondell Moore probably not going to be the guy they're looking for. Amon Ross St. Brown could also fall down there. Um, I think that both Nico Collins and Amon are going to go before the third round. That's just kind of the grades that I had. But guys, they really fit what they want to do on the outside. Those are two guys that I would look at. Maybe if DME Brown slips down a little bit, they maybe go get him. I, I don't know. I, I think he's going to go right about where I have him on my board. Bef okay. Before the mid of the second. I think that's where he's going to go. Um, but – I wouldn't be surprised to see him go as early as the first 10 picks in the second round. And I wouldn't see it be surprised to see him, you know, slip in to the, you know, the first, bottom half of that first round. I've heard a lot of NFL people really, really like Deami Brown. So it wouldn't be as well. Me. Now I have him a little bit farther down than you do, but I think we see it pretty close. He and Elijah Moore, are the two that I could see there, you had Bateman up in the first. That's cool. We're close on Nico being a third. I see him a little bit farther down, but that's yeah. that's not an issue. Amon um, Ross St. Brown, we're pretty close on. Rondale, we're pretty close on. Amari, we're pretty close on. Um, so, like, there's going to be a good chunk of receivers there, folks. They're going to, yeah. they might have to move around if they really want to. Um, and Dan, what I was telling everybody about earlier was my concept that what I've been playing with the mocks the last couple of days is finding a mid round trade partner to move up in the second from 58 and move back from 63. Yeah, that would be – I think that would be a lot of fun and a good idea because you're chunked in there within, what, like five picks of, of each other, of the, the two picks that you have, like 58 and 63. So you're like right in there. And if you can find a way to get up, that gives you an opportunity to possibly get a guy like Danny Brown or someone else on your board that is starting to fall down and you want to go get anyway, regardless of whether it's a wide receiver, corner, edge. I think that right now – the flexibility they've given themselves to take truly almost best player available on their board is pretty much what they've done. Yeah, I'm with you. Um, Marshall, thanks for the super chat. Diami, Tony, Owe, or Cox, who do you take? Um, so, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, right? Um, I mean, my own personal feelings aside, I don't want to touch Tony before the third round. Um, yeah, I've really soured on him 
because I don't have a clue if he's going to be able to play on the outside in the NFL anymore. <laughs> that was one of the, the selling points for me when I, I first had seen some of his tape. But again, I see nothing outside of him being in the slot and getting manufactured touches, but doing well after the catch that leads me he can do some work in the NFL. But um, if Owe and Brown are on the, the board at their pick, that's going to be difficult for them because I think that Owe is a guy that probably is high on their board. And depending on how they feel about edge, I don't have the worries that a lot of Chiefs fans do. So I would personally lean towards Brown, but I definitely wouldn't question them leaning towards away. Yeah, and that's fair. Like I have Tony a little bit higher here because I think the rest of the league sees him better than I do. Um, I don't think they're worried about whether he can play outside or not, but I, I would say I would go Diami or Cox is what I'd be looking for myself. Yeah. Um, let's see, Jeff. Do you think that Hill and Badger might renegotiate to get Brown done sooner than later? Sorry, this is long morning. Oh, okay. Hi, Jeff. Hi, AKA. Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> I don't think – I would think we would have heard something about Tyreek Hill doing an extension. I think they'll probably wait on that one. I think uh, I think Hunter Badger will get done quick. I don't yeah. think it necessarily changes everything for, uh, for when they get Brown done. Yeah, here's my thing about the whole Brown situation. I don't think they would have traded for him had they not figured they were going to be able to sign him after this season. It, if there was an issue with that, I feel like they would have resolved that before the trade um, but, and not really wanted to do that. So you're, I think that they're going to get him done probably near the end of next season. I'm not entirely sure how the, this whole process is going to go, but uh, I wouldn't blink you know i wouldn't question if they were able to get it done earlier but right now it sounds like they're very prepared to just use the franchise tag if they have to and if that if they did use the franchise tag it would actually probably and be end up end up being less than what a, the contract is going to get if he plays very very well yeah maybe folks i think we might get a board from danilo as well so stay tuned for that and we'll have him do a rundown on his as well uh, we do have other content coming this week. Like I said, I do have Dane Brugler coming. I have something from Seth getting ready for this draft. So we do have a lot of other content coming. Don't don't get shy. We got stuff in the pipe. Um, but Jake asked, since uh, it came out about Julio, off the field issues aside, who would you rather have, Antonio or Julio? Julio and Harpy. Yeah, and it's not close. Like Antonio Brown's great. But Julio Jones, is, from physical standpoint, he's one of the greatest wide receivers ever play the game in terms of what he can do when he's fully healthy and, and everything else aside. Uh, Dylan, thank you. Who do you think starts at right guard? LDT or Kyle Long both had a year off. I think it's going to be Kyle Long because he's 100% the better player and it's not really close. LDT was best in his, what, in 2016, 2017-ish uh, I think that at their peak, Kyle Long is, is a way better player than LDT. I would agree with that. My concern is I don't know if he can be at his peak. So, like, I'm I'm taking a total wait and see. I think it could be either of them. I also think that if it's close, you could see Long bump out to tackle. Then I don't either. know. Yeah, we're, I don't know. <laughs> that, I don't know that we're 100 percent set on Yang. No, they're I, gonna have Remmers play right tackle until he's ready. That's 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 not enough for me. Oh, he was good next last year. I'm not worried about it. Eh, I think Long's you, you, better. So you'd rather have Long <clears throat> come off a year, play right tackle out and over over Remmers, who actually played well last year. And if health, if healthy, he's a much better player, like you said. Yeah, that, God, that's yeah. Awesome. yeah. I think he can play tackle too. That's that's the whole thing. It, we don't know what kind of shape he's in until we see him on the field. So. Yeah, he did, I did hear he, that he said he put on like 70 pounds getting ready for the year. So, I mean, wow. that's what he did. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Dang. Okay, that's a lot. That's a Sierra, lot of weight. <laughs> Sierra Nevada, Dankful IPA tonight out here in uh, Eastern Sierras. Cheers to you, Marshall. I like that one as well. Sierra Nevada is a great brewery. Um, Yeah, th they do too many things well. It's kind of criminal. Mark, thank you for your super chat. Um, thank you for the big board. Love all the work. Appreciate that. Aaron and Dan put in it. And what are the chances we would use one of the twos on a center? It's definitely in play. Um, I don't know that Creed Humphrey lasts that long. I think that the league probably has minors below him. I have minors above Creed. I think one of them might be there at 58. Yeah, that's. I think 
the chances of both of being there at 58 are pretty slim. But again, like the way that Miners has been climbing up these boards, I would not be shocked anywhere to where he goes now in the second round. Like he he could be the first center off the board, and I wouldn't bat an eye. Yeah, you never know. Um, let's see. Zane, are you concerned about Orlando's fit in the runs? No. Um, I am a little concerned that he needs to set more vertically than he's used to. I think it'll be a little bit of an adjustment, but I don't think it'll be a big deal. Yeah, it shouldn't be too big of an issue. I think that they're going to use a little bit more basic stuff for him. On his side, maybe you have him block him out a little bit more. Uh, but it, it shouldn't be too big of an issue unless he's starting to let people come across his face. That's going to be the big problem. But he's got those 35-inch arms. He shouldn't have too much of an issue at least getting arms on people in, in the zone game. Yeah, I wouldn't think so either. Um, Natalie, are there any decent linebackers going to be in the second? Um, I have a, a nice little cluster in there. Um, I, two of the top guys in terms of what the Chiefs want to do in coverage in Jamin Davis and Jabril Cox. I have them both. Dan, you have them both there, plus Baron Browning, who you have above them. Yes. And I uh, oh, you've got David at, at a little bit farther than down than me, but not that far. Yeah, it's not that far. So, again, if they move around in the second, they could get any one of those guys, to tell you the truth. Yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting. Zabin has started to scare me off a little bit <laughs> because he's bulked up even more. And there's a rumor or theory that he might be playing edge. And that, no, I'm not. No, 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 no. You play linebacker. You don't play edge. Don't don't try to do that. Be what you are. You're probably the best pure all-around linebacker in this class. Don't even, don't try to do that. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like that too. I hope that that's not his goal, unless he got some kind of specific feedback from teams. Yeah, Julian, I think that's a fine pair there. Yeah, Marshall, do you, th do sure. you see um, Brown, Tooney, Blythe, Duverday, Tardif, and Long all on the field together at the same time? Long a backup. Um, I could see that. That's one of the versions. Um, again, the big question is not only did he have the year, but so did LDT. Yeah. Um. And LDT had not had his greatest season the year before. So I'm a little, uh, we're kind of like just waiting to see both of them, to tell you the truth. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting right guard battle. Who's who's going to get that spot is, is going to be interesting to see. Because like you said, two guys coming off two years they didn't play, getting healthy. Oh, it's good. We're just going to have to kind of wait and see because we have zero inclining on, on either player. We got nothing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's see. Got that one, got that one. Dylan, okay, got Marshall's Canadian Chief. Thank you. I'm glad that you like the draft chart. I I didn't scroll fast enough, so I can't put you on the screen, but I appreciate it very much. Natalie, thank you for the super chat as always. Very kind of you, Holly. Love the graphics in the draft guide. I appreciate that. I work hard on that stuff, and a lot it of people really think does. That, <laughs> yeah, um, and a lot of people think that I'm kind of like um, kindergarten it because like my stuff's all visual. <laughs> I can't write for nothing, folks. Um, in fact, it's it's funny. You can talk to Matt Connor or Joel Thorman. You can ask them just how terrible of a writer I am, and they they will tell you I suck. I I do not spell well. My grammar is terrible. So I try to make things as easy and as visual as possible. Um, and it's probably way easier for NFL teams to just kind of scan through and see numbers and and picture pick stuff like that. So you don't have to read what they're looking for. So I think. Right. It, at the end, it works out better for everybody. <laughs> I think so, too. Uh, okay. Uh, but thank you. I, I do appreciate that, Holly. I'm glad that it works for you. Um, let's see. Gooch, I realize they love picks, Ozzy Newsom. Um, but what are they thinking? Pro Bowl tackle versus your biggest refs. I, that's the biggest thing. And he said, happy uh, birthday, Dan. Oh, no, thank you. Um, Gooch, I'm totally with you. Like, it doesn't make sense. Uh, like, unless you felt like because he demanded to play left and that really pissed you off, which I could see. But if you felt like there was no way you could actually get him to play right in 2021, like, I, I don't know. It, it seems short-sighted to me to give him, no matter what the value was, to the team that you have to go through to get to a championship. Yeah, it's interesting. But again, I, I really think that they did not believe he was coming back. I think that he had made up his mind that he was not going to be back after this next year. And he was going to test free agency. So rather than wait, because I don't know if they could get him to play right tackle next year, his value was highest right now. And I guarantee you that Brett Veach was one of the guys willing to give him the most in terms of that. But again, he was able to swing a second out of them. So again, like what? I'm not entirely sure 
what happened there is that funny really funny video going around someone made about about what happened during their conversation this guy's just talking about oh, just 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 give me that second bat that's all you got to do and we can get this we'll sign it right now and we'll just get it done like i could see that happening and just for some reason being able to get that second round pick back from the, the ravens really kind of made this a win and it's not close anymore yeah i i agree even though my uh, reaction was not good at first. So I apologize for that. <laughs> yeah, you know, hey, it, it's a lot. Um, I like this one, Gooch. You're absolutely right. Me and Stevie need a sister show with RGR where we discuss these mock drafts. You know what? I got a couple of plans in the works about some uh, some alternate channels that revolve around RGR. Gooch, Stevie, we're going to talk. Um, <laughs> there's an opportunity there somewhere. I got plans. Um <laughs> And I'm excited about it. Neil Burnett, thank you for your super chat. We appreciate the support. I will keep scanning for a question for you, though I am bopping around a lot, so I apologize if I don't find it. Um, RJ, what are your thoughts on Josh Palmer from Tennessee? I think he's done a couple of good things, but I'm I'm not sure that he's going to survive and be able to exploit NFL defenses. What do you think, Dan? Yeah, Josh Palmer is a fun highlight reel, but when you watch him play – he does not create separation. He has no short area quickness. He actually, for a bigger guy, he's like, what, 6'6", six, six, a guy who makes plays on the ball in the air, does not have a high vertical. It's like 34 inches, so he didn't have much there. Top end speed was like 4'5", four, 4'5", five, four, five, five, four, five, something like that. It wasn't very good either. Like, he does not – he doesn't do it for me. Like, I have him, I think, in the sixth round here. I was just checking that, yeah. yeah. I yeah, have him in the fifth. You have him in the sixth. I mean, at that point, it's half a crap shoot anyway. So yeah, I mean, he but. has some good plays against some of the top corners in this draft class, but you have to look past a lot of that to get what these players are. Yeah, one guy can flash against a really good corner one or one or two times in a season, but when you watch what they do on a, an every snap basis, not being able to create separation consistently, not being able to stretch a field, not being able to get in your breaks and get your hips sink down, it's a problem. Yeah, it, it does cause issues. Um, I will just say that Aaron agrees with me, so I win. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron Aaron has him in the fifth as well. Um, let's see. Fine. Doug says, give me Jabril Cox all day long. I can certainly yeah. live with that. He uh, he did test today. I didn't see his agility scores, but he had a second it. pro day. You didn't see anything? No, I didn't get a chance to see any of them. I just saw some, some raw uh, yeah. measurement stuff, some weight things. I didn't see anything else. Um, even without his agility scores, Jabril jumped into the top eight in the linebacker crew just based on everything else in the <laughs> athletic matrix. So that tells you what kind of athlete he is. So uh, I'm very comfortable with him. Um, Josh fan, how are you, bud? Hope you're doing well. Uh, I noticed you changed your name, doctor. I just want to get that out there. Uh, I'm so sold on Diami that I'm not opposed to trading up for him if that's what it takes. How about you guys? Um, I, I could certainly understand that. I think that the league sees his skill set a little bit higher. I think if they get to fifth somewhere in to 43 to 51, I think that's perfectly fine if it also accompanies a move back at 63. Yeah, that's exactly what I, I would do too. I don't I don't foresee them necessarily wanting to just get rid of both of these picks and go up. So I, that's what I would agree to as well. Okay. Um Casey says that LDT is going to win this one. I like LDT, so I had no issue with that. Uh, Marshall, if we don't move up um, I don't think Zavin is there. Who's the best linebacker you see falling to late second? Um, it is likely Jabril. Yeah. And I actually think Jamin's not going to be that far ahead of him, to tell you the truth. I hope. I mean, I kind of want him to be there because I I think he's going to be a better linebacker, total all-around linebacker in the NFL. Do? I okay. do. I think he's going to be better against the run because he, from what I see, he has better instincts downhill and getting downhill a little bit quicker. So that, that, that was just my thing. Granted, Jabil Cox is going to be so sticky in coverage against pretty much anybody outside of Travis Kelsey. So, I mean, I can I can understand that. That dude is a cornerback playing linebacker. Yeah, and, and it's not close. It's not like a safety at like 218 coming down in there. No. He's like, he waited at 233 today. Yeah. So, and he, he runs about 2% body fat. So, um, he's an athlete. Um, and I find it very curious and rewarding that you and I both see Javen slightly ahead of him again because of a more well-rounded game. Yeah. Um, and Javen is no slouch. He's actually better in the athletic testing than Jabril is. Yeah. So 
I, again, I don't have the agilities, and that is, Jabril is the guy that I'm waiting on to do my final yeah. update of the Matrix and the draft guide, you guys. If you guys are purchasers and you have the draft guide, um, I update that every now and then, and then you can just re-download it. It's just available to you whenever you go back to the page. If you're somebody new to the stream, click the like and the sub and the bell notification because I haven't said that yet tonight. <laughs> um, but also uh, consider the Matrix <clears throat> and the draft guide because it puts it all together, athleticism and production. Um, and use the code uh, Matrix RGR. It gets you a, a big chunk, like 20% off. So um, it's a good deal there. That said, uh, back to Remy. Remy wants to know, um, I love the attitude, but Clark is not producing. Uh, any scenario he gets thrown into a trade or does the contract prevent that? Yeah, that's a, a pretty tough sell, really, for, for, for a team, for a guy who's not doing as much as you thought he was going to do when you paid him. But again, they did not restructure his contract. So that does allow them to cut him at the end of this season if he's not continues to not perform. And I think that would be what happens if he has another season like he had last year. I think that, you know, he could flash any time. And quite frankly, I still feel like he's probably not 100%. So that's what I'm kind of waiting on. And that's kind of the, the problem, though. Like, if he's, yeah, again, if he does it again this year and has more issues with that stomach bug, comes in underweight and he's just not performing, I think that they're just going to be, they're going to cut the tires. And if they see that being an issue, that might bump Edge up higher into one of these spots, like in the second round. Rock on. Um, and folks, I just, texting with Danilo too. He's got his board. He's going to get that done too. So you'll get a video from him um, and break that down a little bit too. So we could all get together. Um, let's see who else, who else, who else, Ben, thank you. I'm looking for another question for me, but I don't see it. So I'll just say thank you for the support and hope that we get back. Cause, cause you did it again too. Dang. I feel bad. So Ben, just make a comment in there and let me get you something for it. Gooch, as always, thank you again. In your opinion, what's the second best O-line in chief's history? No one beats Rove Shields and those boys. No, no one does. Um, is this the second best? I perform. Yeah, I mean, oh. she knows better than I do yeah. whether this may be the second best <laughs> O-line class, right? <laughs> On paper, it's I, I can see the argument. It's probably the, it's clearly the best group for Andy Reese tenure. Um but can they come together as a five band unit? Yeah, that's that's what it's going to take for me to be able to say one way or the other. Yeah, I just got to see them together because we like this is you bring a brand new. This is going to be a brand new starting starting five. I think outside of I think Bremer is going to be a starting right tackle. But it, we have to see them play. You have to see the chemistry. You have to see what they can do. I still am a little hesitant on Brown. I know everyone's like freaking out. I watched him play. I wasn't super impressed with his run blocking. I think that he has some contact strength issues. Again, the athleticism in pass protection. But he's going to work to get better. And he said that today in his press conference, which is really all you need to know about him. He's just going to continue to work to get better. So I think that this offense will help him. It will give him more opportunities to be what he is best, which is a pass blocker, not a necessarily run blocker, in my opinion. So we'll see. Hmm. It'll be fine. Um, good question, Ruthless. Do you think Owe can play linebacker because of his athleticism? Um, I think he probably could run around like a linebacker, but I don't think he can play linebacker. Um, the reads are much more comprehensive at the linebacker level than they are lined up over one guy. So keep it simple for him. Get him to the quarterback, and then let's worry about what he can do. Yeah, he was having trouble reading stuff last year as a, as a defensive end. You could tell that he's just – He's just out there as a linebacker, an athlete playing edge. So yeah. it takes Dude, some time. And that's what I don't. I was on somebody's. I think I was on radio in Pittsburgh, and they were like, "So he's he's going to be like the best pass rusher ever, right?" I'm like, "He might be the best athlete ever. He's not a football player yet. <laughs> no. So he's got to learn. <laughs> easy. <laughs> um, Jay Sims, great question. Why is Nico below Amari Rogers? Separation." That's pretty much it. That's why he is there for you. I, just, I don't think he's there for me. I think I have Nico above Amari. But do you? Let me look. I'm pretty sure I do. You do. Yeah. No. Yeah. By several spots. Yeah. Whereas mine, I don't. I don't think it's terribly far though. It's not that far. Like I have both second round picks. I just got Nico and going a little bit higher, in my opinion. Then yeah, and I have Rogers going a little bit higher. It's not. It's not drastic. For me, it's just like how easily you get separation. Yeah, Amari just does a lot, does a lot of things well. 
I, I'm much more worried about contact on his part, even out of the slot, than I am anything else. And I, I do believe, after watching Nico at the pro day, watching him do a little bit more with his short area, obviously his, he tested very well. Um, I, I have more a belief that he can become a better weapon in the NFL than I do Amari Rodgers. Okay. Yeah, and I can understand that. He certainly got the uh, the wherewithal in his yeah. advantage, I would say. Um, let's see. Tiebreaker. Aaron has Nico higher, so I lose. <laughs> okay, so we're one and one so far. Um, but Danilo agrees with me that that uh, LDT and Long is, is a more appetizing pair. That's fine. I'll take a guy that's played last year over one that didn't. Okay. Um, still draft a tackle question mark. Ben, thank you. I'm glad you got the question back. LB or DB in the cluster. Um, I don't think I can say go get a tackle at, at 58 or 63. But I can say if you trade back with one of those, yes. I think the next cluster is probably down in the 70s to 80s, I want to say. Yeah, that's where I have Forsyth and Spencer Brown, and I like both those players. Dan, what do you think? I'm thinking later, like fifth round, you take a guy like Tommy Doyle, Josh Ball. That's what I'm looking at right now. You get some guys that you think can come and contribute now with some of your picks you, you got back and that you can possibly trade back into the third and fourth round. But you take some some chances on guys that have to develop in the fifth round. I want to show you guys this just because this is fun. And and this is the thing is we all did this independently. Yeah, we didn't do um, it together. <laughs> you know, Aaron did his – Dan did his, I did mine. Daniil is doing his. Like we, we did it specifically so we didn't become what a lot of organizations become, and that is groupthink and affect everybody else's opinion. We did it independently. And this is the way that it came down. I had Tommy slightly <laughs> above Josh in the fifth, and he has just slightly flipped. <laughs> I find that entertaining. That's so I, fun. Like we, the, the like you like I said. The funny thing is we did it so separately. Like I didn't look at Ryan's. We, he didn't look at mine. He just did this, and it turned out that way. That's pretty cool. And, I, and I'm sure Danielle will throw us all for a loop. It's just one of those things. Um, everybody has their own takes, and they build their yep. own things. Um, let's see. Did I get all the way caught up? I'm not sure that I did. If you sent a super chat, please let me know. Aaron, hit me if I miss somebody. Um, I think we have a couple more, and we certainly have other questions. We're going to start with Matt. Um, outside CB and LB, any other guys in the D you want to see D Veach draft for? Um, they got to have another edge. I like what Mike Dana does, but they, they got to give him some support. And I think the key, just like the defensive tackle group, is they need to be four or five deep at the edge so that they can rotate. And I think that will help Mike progress as well. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. That's why I want them to get one on day three. But again, it's all going to – I think that now that they've given that, themselves that flexibility, whoever's on the board – that, that, that's just assume that always on the board at 58. That I think that's going to be very appetizing. I think a guy like Joseph Osai, if he's there in the third, in the second – in the 63 or 64, that's going to be an option as well. Some of these guys that are um, edge players – Holy crap, you dumb dog. Um, <laughs> <laughs> popped up on the window. Uh, it happens. It, it, they're going to be app, they're going to be intrigued to take them and I think that that's given them more than enough opportunity now to, to, to do that. So I got no issues with them taking an edge right now and I think that now that they've got multiple picks, you know, in the second round that it's probably a little more likely at this point. Yeah, I'm with you. Um can AC, good one here. Um, Jamar Johnson, he is productive. Um, the only thing I will quibble about, we both have him pretty high. Um, Dan has him at the bottom of the second. I have him mid-third, so we're not that far apart. My only thing is I want to see him in space. I don't want to see him doing the damn thing down in the box. That's what I have Jacoby Stevens for. Um, and Jacoby will be perfect on this team. And, um, of course, oh, now I don't I've have said Jamar Johnson down there. You have Jamar Johnson in the bottom of the second oh, right, that's here. right I was looking at corners, boo. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm Let's see. Uh, again, we go to the, the tiebreaker, and Aaron has Jamar at the top of the third. So all about the same area. Um, but I do like him in space better than I like Dan. So I don't want to see him get tied up on, on linemen or even tight end blocks, to tell you the truth. Um, Danilo said, Zavin will play linebacker and, but pass, but, uh, and stay on the field for pass rushdowns. Yeah, he, he, still, he is still lighter than Okafor. You're right. 
Um, I just hope that he's not too big for him. Everybody's a little bit different. And uh, I would have liked him right where he was. It listed at what, 258 or whatever it was. Yeah. Really, really liked that on film. So um, Rankin traded for a day three pick, Ben. I don't think you could do that. I don't think anybody has any value in Martinez Rankin. And they shouldn't because he hasn't done anything. I'm sorry, guys. I know a lot of you like Martinez Rankin from what he did, but he showed some flashes. That's all he. That's all he did. Yeah. We don't know what he is. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll, and maybe we won't find out. I don't know. Matt Mitchell, good point. Um, Mrs. Ellerson in Virginia Beach. Um, I'm sorry. And um, what was her name? Uh, Mrs. Magnuson in um, Coronado. Uh, I, I apologize. I, I learned nothing from you, and it's not your fault. <laughs> Um, any chance the Chiefs trade up early in the second for a wide receiver? I mean, trade up early? Yeah, I mean, they could. Um, I, I think if they're going to trade up, though, they're going to put both those twos in the package and try to get back into the first. Otherwise, I think it's going to be incremental and they'll probably trade back with the second number yeah. two. I'm interested to see how far Terrence Marshall will fall because of his lingering leg issues that have crept up over the last month or so. He did test, he did his pro day with a hamstring injury. So, and he still ran like a four three nine. So I mean, that was kind of the impressive thing that I took from that. But that might push some wide receivers down the list a little bit. So we're gonna have to see how that works out. Caden, thank you very much. I want to answer your question, so come back with it, will you, bud? Um, let's see. Okay, Paddock, how are you, bud? Glad you made it onto the live. I know it's weird. We're just trying to keep moving. <laughs> everything's weird these days metal rocker how are you um i was just curious to, uh, but heard you talking about doing something special after the draft uh with gooch and thought you mentioned might have mentioned my name yeah hey why not there's a lot of folks that i'd love to talk to like what i'd like to do is do a series where we bring on folks into a zoom and, and we record with you guys yeah you know every now and then like let's let's fill it up let's all get our opinions out there um i will say this i get a lot of questions about especially from like the traditional bloggers and those guys that work for sites like like addict and pride and those kind of things like how do you do this just being out here on your own and i'm like well we've built a community around rgr and it's the people as much as the you know the five of us that are on camera sometimes you know so like i want to i want to do something like that so we can expose more of that we are going to do um the member streams and, and the member zooms and all that stuff but i want to do something else as well so um, it'll just be about timing and whether whoever wants to participate. So, um, should they re-sign Jay Reed next year? I mean, if they really feel like they could do it ahead of time, cool. I, I personally would want to see him on the field before I even considered that. Yep, All right, that's what I was going to say. Just got to get him. Maybe in the first two games, he comes out and blows it up. And like, okay, let's get this deal done. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. I'm okay with that. <clears throat> Um, okay. I'm not sure what lightning strikes you're talking about, Cole, but, um, I'm scared of lightning and I just want that out there in public. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I put nothing past the man anymore though. Every time I think I have a clue, I got nothing. So Casey pretty much feels the same way. It looks like thinks he's a genius. Um, got top 15 OT in the league for 31 and trade up all the way up from 96. And eight. That's exactly the way that you should look at it, Casey. I'm glad you bring that up. You basically drafted Orlando Brown with the first round pick. Yep. And you used three and four to get all the way up to 58 in the in the eh, low mid second round. Um, that's the way you got to look at it. I don't care about the fifth and the sixth and the swapping and the stuff. No. Eh. That's exactly how you should look at it. And it's it's not even like – it makes it look so bad for the Ravens too. It makes it look really bad because you gave them, the Chiefs, exactly you know what they wanted in a starting left tackle who's a Pro Bowl player who has the, the potential to be a top five left tackle in the league. And you did it for a pick for a player that you don't know was going to work out or not. So they went ahead and they got something out of a, you know, essentially you know the mystery box that could be 31. And you went from, you know, the third and fourth round back in the second round. That's just, it's an awesome way to think about it. So I appreciate that insight, Casey. Yeah, absolutely. Nathan, what's your opinion on Derek Barnes from Purdue? I think he's worth 144 as a middle. I'm, I'm torn on him. He had a good senior bowl. Um, in fact, everybody I know that was there really thought yeah. he stood out. But he's played, he's played off ball one year. 
and I don't see the instincts. And I got to review all the senior bowl footage and is, and he made plays, but I think it was more instinctive than understanding what was going on at the position. He still feels like he's a pass rusher in, in a small body to me. Yeah, I, I can definitely see that. And my projection in the fourth round is just based purely on that athletic profile that he he presents. I, I, I'm not so sure that you can draft him with the idea that he becomes the next Mike. That would be maybe if they didn't draft Willie Gay last year, say you want to get somebody who can come in and kind of cover via Will this year, that would be something that maybe leads towards his – uh, his skill set a little bit more, but they're looking for a guy who can come in and in maybe two years take over for Anthony Hitchens, and that's what they're going to have to do, and they're going to have to get somebody. That's why we, we've been harping linebackers so hard in the second round because you need a guy with the instincts that can play downhill, that can get his nose in there, shed you know shed blockers, play in the run, not just the pass. So you have to be able to ID and set everybody up too. So I mean, it, it's a it's a lot to ask. It is a lot. And, and you're right. Like, I know you asked about the middle linebacker. Going from edge to an off ball, that's one thing. Going into the middle and controlling yeah. the defense, I don't see that in his future. Um, Canadian Chief is pissed, and I get it. Stop picking on the Canadians. I'm not you guys. picking. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's not because he's Canadian. I promise. It's just because he's not very good at football. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's just boil it down. Okay. That's, that's fine. Ah, uh, that's funny. Um, Tyler. What available free agent defensive players do you think the Chiefs grab you for after the draft? I think Breedland's the only one that they want. Um, nobody else out there sits. Go get him to me. I think that, well, Melvin Ingram already has a uh, has a an offer on the table, so there's a possibility he comes to play in Kansas City. Well, however likely or unlikely it is, it looks like he might just be waiting if, for teams to sign after the draft. So yeah. He's not getting any more money. If he was, he would have already gotten it by now. No, I'm just saying that's what he's waiting for. He he's waiting for somebody to get desperate because they don't get in the draft what they think they need and be willing to pay him more money. More cuts are coming after the draft, so <laughs> the teams are just going to wait for that, not waiting for you. Um, we got this event rep. Okay, I like you. Um, do you think that he has another surprise coming, Dan? I don't know. No, I, I don't think major surprise. Like, I, I think – the, the 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 big surprise is is here and it's it's already here it's on the he's on the Chiefs now, um, maybe some shake up surprises depending on where he moves in the draft. Doug Tyler, I like the way you're thinking, you guys. Yeah, it's awesome. You're, you're on fire. Um, let's see, RJ. Would either of you rather replace Remmers with a rookie, Christensen, Stone, or Brown, or uh, replace Blythe with a rookie? Um. I think Niang's there for a reason. I'd go with the center. Yeah, exactly. You have Niang. If you're going to replace him with somebody, you may as well just put Niang in a right tackle and then draft a center. Like I think that's what they're actually going to do because Blythe is here for one year. Like he was, I think that he was their pigeonhole center in case they needed something and they couldn't get someone in the draft. Now they're going to kind of take their, I would think a center in the fourth round personally. That's just kind of what I, what I see them doing because I don't know if they're going to have the guy that they want at 58 and 63. But we'll see. I hear you. Aaron, thank you for pointing okay. that out. 450 tonight. I like that. That's awesome. If you, if you guys would hit the like, that does always help us and help more few people find us, to tell you the truth. Um, let's see. Mark Lawrence, thank you very much thank again. You. I see I love, that. love for Canada. <laughs> um, I'm working on something. I'm going to have to go to BC when things open up again, you guys. So um, might do a Canadian meetup there. Um, it will be at Whistler where they make Black Tusk. I'll just tell you that. Um, <laughs> that brewery is on the top of my list. Uh, I haven't been there since I was in college. And for those of you who know how old I am, that's, you know, pre-internet. <laughs> Shut up, Dan. <laughs> I'm just laughing at the idea of free internet. <laughs> uh, I'm excited to see an improved O line um, face five to seven men boxes and others dropping back into place. I, I am too, Mark, and that's that's the whole thing. Oh, and he did say happy birthday, Dan. Yes, I, I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, and that's the thing is, I think they're going to still see lighter boxes, and, and I think they have to take advantage of that. I hope that Andy's like. This is my thing. Like Andy's super creative in the pass game. I hope that he applies that and is like just as creative in developing some runs that can take advantage of what they're getting. I think he needs to let EB take some of that for the run game. 
and say, look, I want to scheme things off of the run game for the pass game. Let's see if you can – because he's got to get a coaching job at some point, right? Like we assume he's going to be getting a coaching job. So this would be an opportunity not only to utilize this offensive line that they just went and got to not only help protect Patrick, but to take advantage of the light boxes when teams are just going to drop into coverage. You now have to make them pay and make defenses think what you're going to do. You can't just sit back and let them play coverage all day. You can't. Eventually, you you'll just lose. You'll beat the better. You'll beat the worst teams, but the better teams and the better defensive minds will beat you. Even if yeah. even with Patrick Mahomes, and yeah. I know that that's raining a lot of people's parade, but it's just the truth. Hey, they play a factor as well. It's not just the guys on the field. You know, it, everything flows from the top down. Um, Gooch, what do you mean as a sleeper? As in a sleeper to get to fifty eight? I think it easily Basham would be the more there, um, but sleeper in terms of who could be like an all pro eventually. I think everybody feels Caleb Farley's the better prospect, but I, I am again concerned about his health. That's my big thing. Yeah, so. and I'm not even very high on Basham. <laughs> um, no, doesn't really do it for me that much. I have him as a you know as a what is it third round grain. I, I think I've got now him. I got to go look again. You and the stuff. Yeah, you got him in the third. Oh, that's. Third. Aaron's, I think you got up on the right there. Oh, sorry. Well, keep no, it's working. fine. I was trying to remember off my own, the top of my head. You got him in the third too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a, it's a, he's a third round guy to me, and that's kind of just okay. Like I would much prefer Joe Tryon, Peyton Turner. I Either. like Peyton Turner. I do too. I really like Joe Tryon. My like, guy, yeah. I really do. Stevie, improving a run blocking, do the Chiefs intentionally run more? Does Pat hand it off and light boxes more RPOs? Is this about being able to run third and fourth and long? I don't know about third and fourth and long. It, it, they should be in better positions, I think, to get in the third and eights and the third and sixes and those kind of yeah. things. Even Patrick talked about it at his press conference last week. Like I watched the pro the Super Bowl a couple of times, and I probably could have taken more of the RPOs or just handed the ball off. It's like, yeah. okay, we're, we're seeing growth. That's got to be encouraging. Uh, Javonsi Parker, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, just because, well, now I feel like That's I'm cheating awesome. you. Thank you, Javonsi. Yeah, I appreciate it. Um, yeah, we'll keep trying to spit it out so that it is worth it. Um, we're going to wrap up. Good Lord, I didn't realize we were over already. My wife's like, um, dinner's ready, dummy. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to have to get cut in here. But um, since we're over, we're going to answer the Super Chats. We're going to finish that up, and we're going to get out. Um, I'm late. Willie said, Will Sampson said, thank you. I appreciate it. Marshall or more or Tony? Which more? Um, I like more. He's the most freak athlete uh, of the three. I'm guessing he's talking about Rondale being um, the freak athlete. I mean, Elijah's good, but Rondale's the number one. He's the closest thing in this draft to Tyreek Hill. Um, uh, I still go Marshall. You mean Waddle? <laughs> no, like on the, on the Matrix, uh, Rondale's number one. That's weird. Um, <laughs> just in terms of athletes, okay, I, I get that. Um, so if we're talking about just playmaking ability, you'll lean towards more because he can do more things with the ball in his hands. But for this specific offense, I, I think Marshall is the better fit of the, the three players here. That's just my own personal opinion. I'm with you. I won't argue. Stevie, I got it. You meant third and short and fourth and short. I'm, I totally get you. Yeah, I think Patrick will just uh, adjust himself. I think, again, I think we're seeing growth. We'll still see it. James Grisham, thank you. For the love of all that's holy, we better get in a linebacker. Here's, here, here's my thing. What if they play even less base defense? Yeah, I think they will. You know, like that's my only concern about spending, especially – uh, one of the twos on a linebacker is that I got to see him on the field. And maybe it's a thing with Willie and his development and it's personal, but I didn't see enough of him last season. It's going to so, be big demon, guys. Here it comes. He's don't don't now. stop. Stop. <laughs> stop. As a player, I like him better than his brother. <laughs> well, I was going to say, in terms of athleticism, he is better than his brother. Uh, Doug, thank you again, as always. Over 18,000 subs. Oh, thanks. I forgot to notice that. Um, yeah, okay, we broke 18K. Rock on. That's awesome. Uh, hey, we're going to get to 100K eventually, you guys, and then we'll be serious. <laughs> we will eventually. I know there are more fans than 18,000 Chiefs fans in the, right? on the YouTube. Right? There's more than that in the parking lot on a Friday. <laughs> but thank you, Doug. And Avery, thank you. Um, day three pick, offensive or defensive player, 
you like from each of you? What do you think he could be an impact as a rookie? Wow. You're Dave? asking the question of the videos that I'm going to be doing for the mornings this week, so I can't even answer that right now. <laughs> <laughs> Give a preview. Give a preview. I'm pulling your, your sheet up here. Yeah, so day three is really where I think that the Chiefs like the wide receiver room. And the guy that I'm going to do the video on, uh, I'm not going to tell you who it is, but a guy, a different guy that I do like on offense because I think that the wide receiver group is where they're going to go, Daz Newsom, and not just because his, you know, his teammate is Dammy Brown, but Daz is a guy who I watched initially, and I was like, okay, I'm not super high on him, but I went back and I watched him again this past week, and he did a lot of things. Really well, and I also went back to his 2019 season when he had he had over a thousand yards, and they used him more on the outside. So he's a guy who you primarily will see in the slot, but he's not someone that you have to just put him in there. He can also play on the outside. His short area quickness does enough to get him open. He doesn't have to worry about press so much. He has pretty good hand fighting skills, and the guy doesn't drop anything. He just doesn't drop anything. He can do good good some good stuff after the catch. I think that. Getting somebody in this offense that has sure hands is important. A slot that you can kind of go to, not always have to go to, you know, Travis Kelsey on third down. Get somebody you can trust in there on a, in the slot to just, just to throw them the ball and catch it for five yards for a first down. That's someone that I could see carving out a, a role in the NFL and having a really, really good career out of it. I, I think that could be cool. Um, I'll go the opposite. I will go somebody to defend that. Yeah. And the guy that really intrigues me is Israel Mukwamu. Yeah. Um, I want to see him make that transition from corner to safety. He's a zone corner, so it shouldn't be too hard. But I feel like he's got a good enough feel in zone that he could make an impact. And he's like six foot three and a half. And he's got yeah. a wingspan from I like that. Happens. I like that pick. Uh, let's see who else do we have? We have Gooch, of course. Um, wait, you're worried about Basham, big guy with decent lateral movement power. What worries you about him, Dan? I mean, he's got good skills. He just doesn't like pop for me. And the thing for me is I really want my own personal thing about this defense is they don't have speed. They don't have speed on the edge. They need to get somebody in there that has speed and speed to power and speed separately. Like, you need to be able to do more than one thing is outside of just pummeling guys because eventually a tackle is just going to jump at you and make you go wall the long way around. You have to be able to do more, be more multiple in your sets, do better with your hands. And that's something that I didn't see much out of Basham. Fair enough. Um, we missed a couple that went off my screen because I don't scroll fast enough. Apologies, <laughs> you guys. Holly, favorite edge rusher in the draft, Dan? Oh, Quitty Pay. <laughs> it's Quitty Pay. <laughs> It's like he plays at Michigan or something. I mean, it's not just the Michigan thing. It's like he's the best athlete in this entire draft outside of J Jason Owake and actually play and be productive. Yeah, I get it. I, I too like Tryon, but I also like Deo a lot. So Yeah, if if he were like fully healthy, he'd be much higher up on my board. <laughs> yeah. Um, Joshua, I, I can't put yours on the screen. I apologize. Um, was just curious how you feel about the Chiefs moving forward beyond 2021 with all these one-year deals and only having 24 players. I think that's smart. I think that allows you to retain your ultimate, your high-end talent, and you fill in with one years where you can or you get younger and you fill in with the draft. So I'm super happy with it. That um, and they're also waiting for the cap to, to, to go back right. up and explode. So there's that. Yeah, and that will create more room all by itself. Um, Gooch says the super chat button still works. Glad to know. Thanks, bro. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and he also says, uh, do we sign Bell to spell CEH behind the line and cut Darwin? I don't think so. Um, I, I think again, just like uh like what we saw with Shady, like I think it there was an opportunity and it's passed and it's over. Yeah. I think they're gonna draft someone on day three, give him a, a speed element. Okay. Um, let's see here. Oh, okay. Now I got a few more I can display. Am I caught up yet? No, not yet. Um, Gooch also said, wait, no, that's the one you just answered. Okay. And so it's Stevie's turn. Okay. So we got Gooch's and now we're caught up. Now I can put these on the screen. Good Lord. We'll finish these super chats and we'll call it a night. You guys, I know I'm going long. Um, can you add, you can add one former chief in his prime to each of the offense, defense and special teams who you got. I mean Jamal Charles for the chief for the offense, and it's it's not close. Even though I love CEH, I think that Jamal would be <laughs> just unheard of, unspeakable. Uh, I mean DT for the 
defense again linebacker we're not he's going to be incredible special teams and i i mean probably i mean the human joystick right get him out right? there and get him out there to return everything <laughs> you gotta get him out there i would say that too but stevie i'm gonna twist it on you um i'll take Derek Duran, Cherry, and James Hasty, and I don't give a crap about the offense or <laughs> special teams. <laughs> Fair point. Uh, Gooch, first Sherman, then Alabama, now Bastion Dan, you're killing me. I'm sorry, man. I can't help it. My opinions are my own. I didn't hear that bit, dinner bell or fat lady. Don't call my wife. Hey. Yeah, that's not very nice. You're going to get me in trouble, Gooch. Dang. Um, and his final one is Frank does one thing. We signed him for $20 million. Hey. If he gets to the quarterback and he's back consistent, I'm all for it. He does more than just one thing when he's healthy, but that's okay. Oh, but he wants he's going to throw stats at you now. Basham's 10 yard was faster than pay. Test or test, buddy. Go watch the tape. <laughs> <laughs> and with that comment, we're going to leave you guys because I'm getting hungry. Um, but anyway, uh, this has been a great process. D D Danilo's going to get his done, and I I'm sure DJ's is going to be different from ours as well. And so uh, I'll get his up on the site. You guys have the link to download it all in the description here, and it should be pinned in the chat as well. You can grab all these and review them all you want. Hit us with questions on the other videos. Um, I have Dane Brugler coming for you. <laughs> We're doing some of the guys that are just kind of our guys. Um, Dan's going to get some of those. I have Seth coming. We're going to try to cram as much in as we can pre-draft. Then we're streaming live Thursday night and Friday night, and we're going to jump in and stream when the Chiefs get close to their picks in day three, unless they start trading around, and then I'll just put the thing on, and you'll just have to listen to me yammer. Yeah. Um, my kid's competing on Saturday, too, so I'm going to bop in and out, and guys are just going to have to take over for me, whoever's on. So, um, Avery, good point. Dang, I should have thought of that one. Dale Carter. I'll still take Hasty over Carter, though. I'll just say that. Um, I hope you guys have a great night. We'll have another video for you tomorrow. Um, look for all kinds of stuff. It'll be morning and night. We're going to cram as much as we can in until the draft starts. Thanks for being here, Dan. I appreciate it. No problem. I hope you guys are enjoying this week up. It's almost here and it's almost done. We're just so close now. And then I'm going to sleep for a week. So all uh, right. <laughs> I hope you guys have a great time. You guys take care and we'll talk to you tomorrow.